Hey guys, what's going on? Happy live stream. Que pasa? How's everyone doing? You know, it's a damn good day today. I'm going to say that today is a good day. Uh, we got to watch Eugene have his uh, live stream with Antoine Lee, which was very enlightening, I must say. How many of you guys got to kind of join that? I hope you, if you haven't watched it, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, Antoine Lee is such like a I don't know, down down to earth, uh, you know, just a humble, down to earth, cool guy, like someone you could just go have a beer with, you know. It's happening, Rich. Second half of Ram Duck across the across the pond. Uh, good evening, everyone. You know, and there was a. Uh, it's interesting because uh, there was a guy in there that was kind of uh, giving the brand and and me some shit, and I was thinking, you know what? I bet you that's one of the guys that created like 12 different profiles because he kept getting blocked just to go in there and talk shit. How empty is your life if you have to do that? You have to create special profiles to go in there and just try to drag everyone else down. Just a reminder of how great our lives really are. How great are, how great, uh, you know, the people in this community, I blocked them too. I blocked them too. Fuck that guy. Eight-year-olds, dude. Eight-year-olds. Benji, what's going on, man? Keith, your comment cracked me up. Uh, Parfum de Marley. Jail exclusive. Uh, Johanna did a video actually on, uh, what was it, Antaeus? Was it Antaeus? I think it was. Did a great job on that too. I loved your description, by the way. Have, have, you, um, have you gotten any more from it now that you've kind of worn it more? Good to see you, Andy. That uh, that haul you've got coming is outrageous, man. Brother from another mother. That's it. Different species. Same mother. Michael John, what's going on? Halston Catalyst, that's right. You sent me a picture of that. It's beautiful, isn't it? Keith mentioned that he got from uh, Halston Catalyst today, he was getting vibes of um, this little bad boy right here. Ungaro Porlome 3, and I told him it was probably the vodka note in both. They both have a vodka note. The two vodka drinkers, the two professional drinkers. I always figured the uh, the vodka drinkers were the were the hardcore drinkers that didn't want you to like smell the alcohol on their breath. You know what I mean? But these are both really good. Um, I think I like this better, but this isn't bad. I've got the uh, there's this there's this rose in the dry down of Ungaro Porlone Three. None of the rest of the fragrance reminds me of it, but just the way that the rose was executed screams the rose in uh Antaeus like that Demashi Jacques Poles rose that they create I love it yep back to fuck that guy Halston 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 what is that Nikki what's Halston Halston yeah Desandra's amazing I brought my bottle out for my video because uh, I did a video on Leighton Exclusif just now. Since someone sent me the decant, I figure I might as well do it. And this is supposed to be like a deeper, darky smoke. And I used uh, Desandra's as an example of what a proper niche smoke should smell like. Because honestly, I get like this bubblegum vibe from uh, Leighton Exclusif. Even though it's supposed to be a deeper, darker, more challenging, more animalic. Uh, version of Leighton, I still get that childish bubble gum. It doesn't go away, you know? Use my wrench. <laughs> uh, 
That's right. Yep. That was good stuff. I liked your first impression. Um, he had a bottle of Jedi as his avatar. He did. I have a feeling I know who the, I have a feeling I know who it was. I'm not going to say, but I have a feeling I know who it was. I think there's a group of maybe, I don't know, five people or so. And they used to even comment on my, they used to be friends with all of us. And all of a sudden, I think they went like, they built like this anti-Eugene coalition and everywhere they do a video or a live or a any topic of discussion, they just go and just like attack Eugene and his brand, you know? Uh, and for I, don't, I have no clue why. No clue. And I don't even think they've smelled the damn fragrances. That's the thing that pissed me off. It's like, you know, if you want to hate on somebody, that's fine. But at least as a perfume lover, smell it. Smell it first before you talk shit about it. Because whenever on my channel, uh, uh, and I, I blocked him from the channel too because I didn't want to hear his shit. But, you know, whenever we had a little conversation yesterday about it on my, uh, they, they actually, what ended up kind of getting the whole thing started was yesterday I did this on the video for a very brief, not even 10 seconds, you know. And they were like, oh, branded merchandise i can't trust anything you say oh you've got a brand you've got somebody and you you know and i assume eugene gave you that towel yeah it's just so you're such a shill and i was like fuck you i wear this with pride you know what i mean because i smelled the fragrances and i know they're good and i and i trust my nose and um and that's just what it is and and i was like they have samples now, you know, go get yourself a sample before you talk shit about it. And they were like, what, they're samples now? Like, yes, there are there are samples now. And then when I asked him in the stream, if you've smelled it, he's like, yeah, yeah, of course I've smelled. I don't think they've even smelled them. They're just stirring the pot for whatever reason, whatever grudge, whatever bone they have to pick against Eugene. You know, it's just just toxic shit. That's it. That's it, Keith. They're going to catch flack no matter what. Um, but still, I mean, I think you should give something a chance before shitting all over it. I'm getting closer to gentlemen instead, wearing it at bedtime, especially, and I have let and taste black sprayer get to know Animal and I'm all better in my closet for now. <laughs> Givenchy gentlemen, this one. The 1974 one, yes, it is very, very good, isn't it? One of the best patchoulis of all time. Uh, I told that to Allie the other day, since she so loved my recommendation of Koros and um, and Furio. I told her to go get go get Givenchy Gentleman. This is your next buy, Allie, right here. Get the one with the silver wraparound little deal. You will not be disappointed. Rich Mitch beat me to this by seconds. By mere seconds, he beat me to this, uh, to, to a backup bottle of that. Rich is fast, man. He may seem slow, but when it comes to vintage fragrance, uh, he is fast. The original Halston. I, I don't think I've ever smelled that. Uh, I have not, Keith. No, but I need to. I think I put it in my bathroom is what I did because I shave in there. I need to I need to decant some of it or or actually wear catalyst one day when I when I'm gonna shave and do the aftershave first. I know you said it was a little bit different, right? Sent to the day, voile de ensemble by motif olfactif. I think I have a sample of that somewhere. That's another house that we could do my new live stream strategy of you know testing four new fragrances. Because I've got a bunch of samples from that motif olfactive house I've never smelled before. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I got a ton. Vetu de Vert. Uh, de Oma. Azuma, I think that's the one that's supposed to remind you of his home in Africa. Uh, Nectar Bois. 
Makai, Mon Oasis, Aklat de Santal, Huakai, Wild de Ensance. There it is. There it is, right there, Nick. Yeah, that'll be a good that'll be a good series. There's a ton of these. I mean, that's a lot of samples to to test. And there's more here. Serenade and Centier de Pins. He's an ex YouTuber um, that put out a decent fragrance line. I don't think the fragrances that uh, he's put out are as good as Eugene's. However, uh, the um, one thing that Mr. Oz can say that Eugene can't say is that he did make these fragrances himself. He was actually the perfumer, like a, he was like a, you know, like a novice perfumer or whatever you want to call it. Do you own Oris Tattoo? I uh, Cor Oris Tattoo, Coros Tattoo. Saw Scentland mention it. I saw him Scentland. I saw Scentland mention it as well, and I've never smelled Coros Tattoo. Actually, I've never smelled any of the Coros flankers. None. Have you tried that a lab on fire liquid night yet? I have not, Mr. Inglewood. Sorry, I've got so I've got so many samples to go through. But at this rate, if we do these four days today, like for example, we're doing four new zoo sticking with our zoologist theme. We're doing uh, musk deer. We're doing um, dragonfly. We are doing. Um, Dragonfly. We're doing cockatiel. And we're doing bat. So, yes, this ought to be fun. I do love discovering new stuff, man. This is a cool way to discover new stuff as far as I'm concerned. Noble leather. Love the dried fruits and leather combo is fire. Need a backup, but they are unicorns now. Yes, that's right. Uh, if you are truly interested, Andy... If you're truly interested in a backup, uh, let me know because I actually know someone that has a backup that they're selling it. They were holding it for me, but I don't think I want it. Not at the price they're asking for nowadays. I think my little half full bottle, 40% full bottle is good enough. It is very good though. And I do love leather. Hello, Justice. Welcome. Ah, Roja Manhattan. I've never smelled that. What's that like, by the way? Is it like a tobacco-y creation-y? Being contrarian is in some people's DNA, yeah. But also, you know, I, especially if you really love perfume, like as much as we do, like imagine going on there and just talking shit about something you don't know anything about. Antonio, welcome, my friend. Glad to have you here. Hope you're not working too hard. Ah, Arbaz. Scent of the day, vintage Chanel Antaeus. Man, I love that stuff. Sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bother. Is doing the video even worth forcing myself to wear late to an exclusive for an entire day when I could be wearing vintage Antaeus? You know, the pains of having your own YouTube channel. I bought Catalyst in the mid-90s and still have that same bottle you just showed, which was the green test tube, which was the green test tube looking bottle. So uh, their their marketing was actually really cool with these Catalyst bottles because this was the 100 mil. Yeah, this was the 100 mil. And I think they had like a 30 mil that was a test tube. Um, so they had, you know, the test tube and they had the uh, beaker or whatever you want to call these. Cool, cool little. And then look, look at the, um, did I put it up here? Aha, it is still here. It is still here. So here's the Catalyst um, aftershave that Keith had sent me. No, Keith didn't send me this. This was... Uh, this was sent to me by Anuj, I think. And you can see that two-tone. You can see the two-tone deal. 
It's like uh, you, you're supposed to shake it up before. This was the aftershave bottle, and it's supposed to have a different scent profile. Very cool. Very, very cool little bottle. And this was like a cheaper, I mean, I don't think this was an expensive fragrance, although I did hear the ingredients in Catalyst were very good. Um, I heard that that was one of the reasons that ended up forcing Halston to end up selling the houses. They put a lot of money into the ingredients of Catalyst. Encre Noir Sport just received it in the mail. Do you love it, Antonio? I love Encre Noir Sport. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Aha. Yeah, this is one of my favorite vetivers in the um, in the heat. Encre Noir Sport is. You know what's crazy is you would you would think that uh, this is the last fragrance in the world that needed a sport flanker, and yet this is so good. It's so good. My favorite vetivers to wear in the heat are um, <laughs> Dushan saying hello for Paolo. That's good stuff. Uh, Dushan's so courteous, you know. Uh, my favorite vetivers to wear in the heat are this and this. This is so good in the heat. That green, that green grassy profile with the tobacco that comes out in the base of Guerlain's vetiver. And one of the best bottles you'll ever find. I love this bottle. So classy. Uh, and... I do, I must admit, I do like Roja's Vetiver in the Heat. Although I think it's just kind of a take on Guerlain's Vetiver. Shocking, I know, but it smells like it's a Shepra with Roja's, you know, tricks to kind of extend the citruses and, and all that stuff. And this is not worth 500 bucks, I'll tell you that. Not by any stretch of the imagination. And... Um, Creed's original vetiver, which is under lock and key. Those are my four favorite vetivers, but you'd be shocked. This is actually one of my favorites. I love this stuff. No one talks about it because it's seen as like a cheapie or whatever, but it's not. I think it's amazing. I think uh, Nathalie Lorson is a, is a genius. Hello, GMG. Vintage Santos. God, you guys are killing me. Vintage... Uh, Antaeus earlier, now Vintage Santos, and I'm stuck wearing Leighton Exclusif. Also, I could talk about it on a video. Ugh. It's days like today, I wish I never had a YouTube channel. Hey, Joseph, welcome, my friend. 1015 Wednesday morning here. Hello, sent to the day. Abby Rouge. Fuck, you guys are killing me. Babouche, welcome. Portrait of a lady. Even that sounds good compared to Leighton Exclusive. Catalyst aftershave is more minty, so it's bracing when you splash it on. Never got that vodka note, but if others did, they must have thought it was an alky. I was an alky. <laughs> That's funny. What made you, uh, just out of curiosity, what reminded you of um, Ungaro Porlon 3 then, Manly? I thought I thought it would have been the vodka note because they both share that. I wonder what, what you got. What'd your sniffer pick out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great patchouli. Uh, if you love psychedelic, I don't. I, I've never heard you really talk about vintage, Daniel. I don't know if you're a big vintage guy or not, but if you are, or even if you're not, I would urge you to go try and get a bottle of that Kiritsia Moods Womo. It's a fantastic patchouli. It's deeper, smokier, darker, more masculine. You get more 80s notes in the bass, like big doses of uh, oak moss. 
it's really textured and ambery, but that dark smoky quality comes out much more. But I mean, it's the grandfather of psychedelic, you know, fragrances like psychedelic would never exist without Moods Womo. Dushan, the hype is right for once. You know, if I found a vintage Este, a pre-Este Louder bottle of Portrait of, of uh, a Lady, I think I would go for it. But I really think I prefer uh, La Dulea Exquise. Wearing Prada Luna Rosa Extreme. I've never smelled that, Joseph. Each day I wear Desandres, I fall in love with it more. The dry down for me is better. Each hour it passed. The most challenging part is the opening, but I'm getting used to it. Yeah. Um. I mean, I wore it to work and I got, I got a positive compliment on it. Sent of the day, Salome, have you tried 40 Rogue and Dervish by Rogue? Uh, 40 Rogue, no, but I own a bottle of, uh, of the original Dervish and I like it, but this is uh, a situation where I don't really care for the opening. The opening is very, very sweet. And over time, the sweetness kind of does this. You know, it does the... It doesn't do the Stuka Dive Bomber. It just kind of slowly goes down. Commercial landing plane. And... Um, so I really got to grip my teeth the first hour because it's so sweet. Um, but once you get past an hour or two, it's actually not bad. It's grown on me. Um, but I really don't like that first hour. And I don't know what the differences it are between Dervish 2 that he put out a year or two ago. But I will say this. The tobacco... Uh, the labdanum, the um, saffron, that Middle Eastern. It's like this Middle Eastern Oriental style. You can tell by the, um, you can tell by the uh, sticker. It's like this Middle Eastern Oriental style. Um, and I think he, I think M Manny Cross is a is a really good perfumer for someone who's self taught. I think his stuff smells, you know, well blended. Uh, the ingredients are great. You can tell he puts a lot of thought into the compositions and, and the um, the briefs and all that stuff. So I'm a fan. That's right. That's exactly what happened. Um, Anuj sent it, didn't he? Hey, Interference. Welcome. Wearing a sample of Dia Woman. I decided to try it after your stream. What do you make of it? I really did not care for it. Um, high quality soap is probably how I would describe it. I much prefer Dia Man. I much, much prefer Dia Man. Oh, see, it's smelling all these other fragrances and hearing you guys talk about all these other fragrances is really getting me down that I'm wearing Leighton Exclusive. Oh, why God? Hello, Shiva. Good to see you, my friend. Have you been sniffing my samples? I sent Shiva like 10 Namwajas he's never smelled before. Smells like old wooden medicine cabinet, ointment for joints, sweet throat, soothing pastels. Uh, kind of, yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? I never thought of that, but uh, also kind of weird. I don't find it similar to Enigma. The performance is shite, though. I guess Parfum version is a lot better. Interesting. The performance is shite. Um, did you pay retail for that, Justice? I don't find it similar to Enigma. Okay. I've heard it compared to Enigma. Can you compare it to anything? Yes, I agree with that, Manly. Or Timbuktu. But I consider Timbuktu and... Um, I consider Timbuktu an icon and Terra de Hermes and those kind of fragrances to be... Um, to be more compositions with vetiver, whereas I consider like 
Guerlain's Vetiver or Ancre Noir Sport or Roja's Vetiver to really kind of be focused a little bit more on the Vetiver itself, even Creed's original Vetiver. Uh, you know, I don't know why I think of them that way, but but I do. I just, I think there's like a distinction in my head between the real vetivers, like Nishane Sultan vetivers, another uh, another vetiver I enjoy, but you probably shouldn't rock that in the heat because of the big amber woods. Um, and then the ones, you know, the compositions with vetiver in them, like this is a vetiver fragrance, actually. This Dia Man, this is a vetiver perfume. The dry down is big vetivers. Um, You know, but it's a complex fragrance, so not many people catch on to that. Uh, okay, interesting. Which one? Which one are you talking about, interference? Hey, Saeed, welcome. Good to see you, brother. Always hated Dunhill Icon. Someone said it smelled like pet smart and then i hated it after that <laughs> um i got this uh like grape soda vibe in the opening of dunhill icon a little bit but i actually like it because i like uh great i like soda smells and fragrances spirito nice thanks for that shiva can't we can't wait to sniff some of those can't wait to sniff my very first uh uh, what was it? Mayo Foscioni that you sent me? That's exciting stuff. I've never smelled anything from the house. I like the first half, a second of Dunhill Icon, and then it just gets annoying to me. I've never smelled the original. Beautiful. Desandra's lovely. Really, I've got a sample of that somewhere up here. Um, that'll that'll show up on our on one of these early impression videos one day. I can't believe you saw Christy Amuse. Oh, it's one of my favorite patchoulis. I love big patchoulis. Speaking of which ram, which version of Christy Amuse Womo should we look for? <gasps> I didn't even know there was versions. I thought it was discontinued um, early enough that it didn't matter. I'll have to get back to you on that interference. I don't know. Rich likes his patch syrupy. But you bought, I remember you bought a Nishane patchouli and you sold Kritzia Moods Womo. I, I'm, I'm confounded, Rich. Now, to be fair, I've never smelled that. Uh... Hey, Tuscan Pleather, I don't think I've seen you before. Uh, well, I don't, I haven't found it because I haven't sprayed it yet. It's right here. It's a sample that I did an unboxing after my early impression on Leighton Exclusive. And inside of that unboxing was uh, this, this uh, black tourmaline little, little mini. Um, by this house, Olivier Dur, is it Durbano? I've never smelled anything from this house. I don't know anything about them either. So uh, this will be, this will, we'll save this for its own video. Before we uh, start getting into these zoologists, I'll just show you guys what I ended up scoring off of Eddie, Senator Eddie, Senator Rank. Uh, this is Siberian Summer. This is a this smells beautiful from the atomizer. It is um oh, it smells very musky. The notes are uh camphor, bergamot, lime, birch tar, birch tar, fir balsam, champaca, jasmine, galbanum, base of Russian cedar resin, vanilla, vetiver, synthetic musks, amber resins, and oak moss. Mmm. Man, I can't wait to wear these. Siberian Summer. And uh, this one is 
Agar de Noir. Look at this presentation. Amazing. I love it. It's only a partial, but beautiful, beautiful cap, beautiful presentation, beautiful detail. Um, so I can't wait to get to know this. This is uh, vintage spice tinctures of cardamom, arnica, calamus, Crataegus, Colombia, and Gayak wood, heart of oud from Laos and India, vintage Arabia and violet accords from 1920, co-absolute of saffron, coffee, I'm excited about this, coffee, ambergris crafted by Russian Adam, base notes of Peru balsam, benzoin, labdanum, and tonka. Look at that, just beautiful little coffin that it sits in. You guys might not be able to see, but it's got like this flower texture on it. Love the presentation. And you can almost see little bits of it stuck to the side. Look at that. How thick that is. Mm. Cannot wait to get to know that. I think Russian Adam's doing some of the most special work in all of FragCon. All of, all of the fragrance world. Uh, and then finally, the final one. Maybe my favorite bottle of all three. Look at this bottle. Oh, it's beautiful. I love the cap. I mean, it's basically the same bottle, but the cap almost makes it. Look at that. So elegant. So this one is uh, Musk Lava or Musk Lav. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, Musk Lav is... Uh, Bergamot and lavender oils from 1920. Lavender absolute from 1915 to 1920. Osmanthus aged Mysore sandalwood and natural wild Siberian deer musk with a base of iris accord, oak moss, and labdanum. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, and you can almost camera's pretty bad, but you should be able to make out the detailing on the cap. Look at that. Stunning stuff. I love it. I love the uh, presentation. Beautiful. Smells amazing from the atomizer. So, uh, yes, I'm very excited to get to know these three. I've never smelled them before. And he also threw in a couple of decants, and one of them was this little bad boy, this black tourmaline that you guys obviously know and I, I don't I don't know anything about it they are reasonably priced then as Ram mentioned in his vid earlier yes they are they're reasonably priced I think you can fi probably find them under 100 bucks recently got Oud Maximus and was absolutely blown away I was deciding between Lao and Mysterious Oud for my second Bortnikov ended up going with Lao Oud and I hope I made the right choice you did at least for me um I would take Lao Oud over Mysterious Oud. Similar vibe I felt between Catalyst and Gar 3 could very well be the vodka note, but my schnoz doesn't pick it up as vodka per se. I guess it's a note that I'm not sensitive to. It's a weird note. I mean, vodka, you don't see vodka very often. I mean, you see cognac, rum, even whiskey, but vodka, almost never. Never knew where to start in the wide range of vintage. What is the grandfather of psychedelic? How do you spell it? It's um, Moods, M-O-O-D-S, excuse me, Womo, U-O-M-O. -O. So it's like Moods for Men. And the house is Kritzia, the same house that did the great Teatro alla Scala. I don't know if you can see the name right there, but it's Kritzia, K-R-I. Z I A Kritzia K R I Z I A, and the the um, fragrance is called Moods Womo. This is Tietro Alascala. Moods Womo is is downstairs under lock and key. I put it back. Um, Tietro Alascala was such a. I mean, uh, Kritzia was such a great house. There it is, Kritzia Moods Womo. All right, let's get started. Where should we start? Uh, Dragonfly, Cockatiel. Let me see when these came out. Let me just, we'll go in order. 
Dragonfly. 2021, 2017 originally, and then redone in 2021. Cockatiel. 2022. Bat. 2020. And musk deer. 2020. Okay. Sounds good. So we'll do um, we'll do musk deer and bat first, and then we will do dragonfly and cockatiel. We'll start with bat. Now the original bat, interestingly enough, the original bat came out in 2015, and it was a Dr. Ellen Covey creation, who now did the fragrance that's called Night Flyer by uh, Olympic Orchids Artisan Perfume, Perfumes. And apparently it's the same as formula as the original bat. So they changed the formula for zoologists, but she kept her formula and now has it released under Olympic Orchids Artisan Perfume under the name night flyer i would love to try that one day that's the re-release of the original version of bat so that's on my wish list i've never smelled it though and it is um so the original had a bunch of uh notes that are not listed now like it had a banana note um there was a uh there was this Let's see. I think there was myrrh in the original. Yeah, there was myrrh in the original. There's no myrrh in the, in the new one. There was uh, tropical fruits in the original. And um, let's see. There was uh, sandalwood in the original. And now they have a teakwood note. So there's definitely some differences. Uh let me get this on my skin, and then I'll try to catch up on the comments here. Good old bat. God, I hate these sprayers. Just in case you guys didn't know that from the first 20 times I said it. Ooh, big guava note in the opening. Huge guava. Probably the biggest guava note I've ever smelled in a perfume. Wow. It smells like guava and mint. I don't know where the mint's coming from, but I'm definitely getting this. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of mint, oddly enough. Pink guava and mint. Maybe that's supposed to be the mineral notes. All right, I'm gonna let this settle down. Let's read the blurb. So the new perfumer is Prin Lamras. Mystical, mysterious murmurings glide upon a blanket of inky sky. Shadows smear across the moonlight. Their darting journey shrouded in darkness. Bats, the only mammal capable of true flight, are enigmatic and alien. Zoologist Bat escorts you on an odyssey through the night. This unique olfactory experience carries tropical jungle, sorry, carries you with the fruit bat to a sumptuous feast in a lush tropical jungle before whisking you down to the recesses of its cavernous home. Sweet guavas and passion fruits ensnare you with addictive notes, then beckon you deep with primordial mineral scents that evoke a rugged enclosure, redolent with hints of damp soil and vegetal roots. Allow yourself to hang draped in pitch black as alluring musks waft over you with every unfolding of the thousands of leathery wings that surround you. Wow, okay. Um, I thought this was going to be much more challenging than what it is. It's almost like a fruity, like a just a mineral fruity fragrance. 
I don't get very much of that challenging earthy soil thing they were talking about in the original. Uh, they must have really toned it down a lot for this, is my guess. Um, so I got it because you're talking about Ungaro Poor Loam 3. One and two are definitely worth it. Three, I would say, is a user's choice. You could take it or leave it. Um, Anu still had some older bottles. So I, while I was getting a haul from Enchante, I just had him throw this in. So I could, you know, have one of the older bottles. But to me, it is, it's the, it's the worst. I mean, they literally go in order for me. Our Ungaro Pour Lom 1 is my favorite. So one is definitely my favorite and the hardest to find. And then Ungaro Pour Lom 2 is my second favorite. And this is almost like if you took something like Tiffany for Men or um, if you took, you know, something like Chanel Pour Monsieur, one of those type of fragrances, but added a huge civet note in the, in the dry down. Um, and so that's why I think this is the most interesting of that style, if you will. And then this is probably the most, most, it's, it's the most popular because it's the most easy to wear. I think that vodka note makes it a little strange, but uh, you will get, you will get rose and, you know, it's, it's, it's a little unique uh, or maybe it was for its time in the early nineties. I think it's a good fragrance. I just think that maybe people like us won't go crazy for Ungaro Porlone 3. It's a lot of like lavender and geranium and rose and oak moss and, and stuff like that. It's kind of spicy, woody, you know, rosy, florally with that vodka note in the top. It's okay. I mean, I, I would I rebuy this? I don't know. Probably because I like the fact I have an older bottle. Um, it's the only one of the three that's still standing. It's the only one of the three Ungaros that are still available, but I have no clue what the current version is, you know? I have no clue what the current version is like, so. Let me just make sure this is, uh, facing outwards. I can just see, see the people at home just, oh, oh God, he showed the, he showed the Les Abstraits logo. So yes, uh, I would say it's a user's choice for Ungaro Porlone 3. One and two are definites for me. These I would 100% rebuy. Hello, Bosman. I'm not really liking what Bat's turning into. Um, I'm almost getting like this eucalyptus vibe. So it started off very sweet with a lot of passion fruit and guava. And... Now it's almost turning into this uh, earthy eucalyptus smell, camphorous eucalyptus. I don't, I don't really like it. This is not, uh, this is not pleasant in a nice way. It's not animalic challenging in a nice way, I should say. Doesn't please my nose. Ah, yes, beautiful. Ottoman Empire 3, a beauty. I actually just got a pretty good size decant of uh, Ottoman Empire 2, sent to me by the great Eddie. And yeah, I love this stuff, man. This is, oh. Oh man, I am in, I am in love with Ottoman Empire. It's one that I still, even though I've got that decant and I have a bigger size decant up there, I still want a full bottle of Ottoman Empire one day. It's so good. Good evening, Rick. Welcome, my friend. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like that. Send to the day, Fate Man, a beauty. Hiding that Ariz Lodori unboxing under latent video was a crime. I almost missed it because of that. <laughs> well, I redid it on uh I redid it on the stream for you guys. 
But yes, there are random unboxings that pop up under under my videos. What are they comparing to Enigma? Uh, Enigma, we were talking about um, Manhattan. Roja's Manhattan, which I've never smelled, but I just heard it was compared a little bit to his Enigma. Is there a vintage form of Moods, Womo, or is it all? I think it's, I thought it was all the same because I thought it was discontinued for so long that any, any version that you get is the, I don't, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think there's multiple versions, but let me check. Let me just go to eBay. Kritzia Moods Womo. Yeah. Oh, look at this. 100 mil splash brand new in the bottle for $59. That is an absolute steal. The guy's got, he's got like 50 of these available at this price. That's a great, that's a great deal. If you don't mind splashes. Yeah. 50, 59 bucks. Um, free shipping. Hell, I might get a backup at that price. Now, if you want the spray, if you want the spray, you've got to pay a hundred, 109. But yeah, I see all I see is pretty much they're Yeah, they're all, I don't see any newer bottles. They're all the older bottles. I don't think you have to worry about a, um, I don't think you have to worry about a reformulation with Kritzia. I wore Bracken Man this morning. The jury is out on it. I wanted to wear Epic, but decided to wait for an outing. Um, okay. You should come on and give me your thoughts one day, Shiva. I want to, I want to, uh, I want to hear what you think of it. I like soapy scents. Also, a plus for Dia is that it doesn't go sour on my skin. Some soapy classic scents type scents go sour on me. Modern Arpege and Gold Man go sour on me. I need to try Dia Man. I think Dia Man is superior to Dia Woman. But if you like soapy scents, I could totally see Dia Woman being a, a like for you. It's just I didn't. Uh, I got almost no projection, or it was very very close to the skin. Yeah, I think it's long discontinued too, Daniel. Just go for whatever you can get. That eBay one at 59 bucks free shipping is a steal. Ah, okay. You think it's closer to Tom Ford's Gray Vetiver? Yeah, I, I could see that, although I haven't smelled that in so long that I can't really remember what it smelled like. I thought it, I thought uh Tom Ford's gray vetiver smelled like Guerlain vetiver, if I remember. Bought Kasha, man, I can't speak. Bought Cartier Pasha Parfum yesterday. I find it very comforting. I really liked it, Jace. I thought they did a good job with that one. Um, that is a much better modern way to go than something like the Parfum de Marley. I'd rather wear the Cartier. No, I have not. We're sampling zoologists today, Boz. I have like a thousand samples in the wing, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a process. Anker Noir Sport is the best vetiver out on the market. I I won't argue with you, dude. Honestly, if if you take that, I won't argue with you. I mean, it's one of the best money can buy, and the fact that you can get it for thirty bucks for a hundred mil makes it even better. I love this stuff. I love uh, all versions of Ankara Noir. Yep, Timbuktu is a great vetiver. Bought the Travel Atomizer directly from Roja's store. I guess people see it similar to Enigma because of the opening. The ginger gives out the fizzy vibe in the first seconds of the opening. Interesting. <laughs> Bateman was amazing. It reminded me a bit of Taroni. Uh, I have a sample of that apparently somewhere but I haven't smelled it yet. 
but I'm really interested in learning more about that Orto Parisi house. <laughs> oh, good stuff, Palace. Glad you guys are here, man. Uh, I think it's more. I think I have more than 500 bottles, Boz. Fate Woman is very good as well. Yep, Dushan's spot on. Uh, but Fate Woman goes more in the... Um, this is one of the only non-magnetic cap amouages I was able to procure. Fate Woman kind of goes more in the realm of um, opium for women. So it's almost like opium for women, but it has this chili note added. And so imagine you took opium for women and amped up this chili note, probably one of the best chili notes in all of perfumery, along with my other favorite chili note is uh, A Taste of Fragrance by uh, Thierry Mugler. That's probably one of the most underrated Thierry Mugler fragrance, uh, flankers. Um, a Taste of Fragrance is outstanding. And uh, you add that amouage DNA to the to the whole thing, and you get Fate Woman. It's good stuff. Rick says, I want Spirito. It's so good. I've never smelled it, but uh, Shiva said he sent me a sample, so that's exciting. It's exciting stuff. Here, it's only an hour less, Palace. I have a chat with Rich about him selling Kinski to me. Oh, God, I can't believe... I still can't believe he sold Kinski. Uh Kinski and uh the other and the other one is that Kritzia Moods Womo, but Rich is on a mission. He's got a strategy. I'll give it to him. He sticks to his guns. Good morning, Bond Image. Good to see you. Glad we are on Nishane. I was thinking of maybe getting one of theirs. What can you recommend? Uh my favorites are probably Sultan Vetiver and Fan Your Flames and um I have a discontinued Nishane coming on the way. Um, Spice Bazaar, but it's going to be probably a couple months. I've never tried Patchouli Koza. A true gentleman indeed. How are you finding Leighton Exclusive? I was reading on Fragrance Scout and Malik and Harsh. No, absolutely not, dude. In the video, I just up, I did a video on it. There's a video up on it. You can watch it later, Saeed. But it's basically me just rambling about how it smells like, you know, cheap amber woods and um, bubble gum. Harsh animalic oud, my ass. That's a bunch of people who haven't smelled anything. Koza means goat where I come from. Patchouli goat does sound good, to be fair. I want to try all the female fragrances. I just tried Epic and Dio Woman, and I like them both. They're they're amazing. Honestly, I should kick myself for overlooking the the female amouages for so long. I need to wear that Nishane patch. Actually, might tomorrow. Yeah, good stuff. It's not a work fragrance, Rich. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. That that uh uh. That Kinski by Kinski just blew me away. I, instant connection with it. I love it. I love it all the way through the drive down, too. Dark and smoky as hell. think you'll be intrigued. Nice. Tuscan Pleather. That's a great username. I have a few Nishanes for you, Bosman. I would say Karagaz, Karagaz for Ramsey Spice Bazaar. Can't wait for your opinion on it. Nice, it's coming. Africa Olafantin Un Unutumam. Okay, so actually, uh, Africa Olafant is on my wish list, but someone messaged me and said, you don't need it. You have enough fragrances that are like that. It doesn't do anything different. I was like, really? But Unutumam is uh, insane. I really like this. Even though it's got caramel, it's that strange contrast with that castorium that, that really gets me. What's up, Jimmy? Hope everyone's having a great day as well. It's rainy here in Texas. Couldn't get on with Siberian summer when it came out either. Had to skip that one. It was too ripe, for lack of a better word. Interesting. 
Karagaz means black eye. Happen to know that. Boz, do you like boozy frags? Agar de Noir is a soy sauce accord to me. Musk Lav was my favorite from that release. I've heard great things about Musk Lav. Um, but Eddie, the person who sold it to me, said Agar de Noir is, is uh, probably the one to go to go heavy on. He had a backup I was thinking about buying, but I've spent way too much on fragrances lately. It seems Hachibot means cigarette. Interesting. Try Nefs and Fan Your Flames. Nefs was good. I actually have a video on that one on the channel. Nefs was good. Uh, I sampled that one. It was good. It reminded me of a spirit of Dubai. I'm really not liking that. It's drying down into like this medicinal, um, almost the smell of like that, uh, if you ever put one of those like patches on your skin for sore muscles, you know, and it and you take it off and it has that after smell. That's kind of what that reminds me of, but with minerals, with minerals and a slight soil note. It's not good. Not good at all. That's very disappointing. Now that musk lava is the gem of that collection, aside from possibly Santal. I love Santal Galore. Uh, I would, I would, oh man, what I wouldn't do for a bottle of Santal Galore. There's a bottle on eBay, but they want $1,000. They can fuck right off there. Yeah, it's dark, isn't it? Will you make a video with top perfumers with a T note? I think I already did justice. I think I have a top. This is not a top 10 T video on the channel, actually. Um, if I didn't, I will very soon. How's that? Wasn't a fan of must love, but I have, I can have weird taste. I mean, vodka should have a smell. That's the point of vodka neutral. Vodka shouldn't have a smell. Ramsey recorded that video. I thought I did. Yeah. It's in, if you go to uh, my playlist under this is not a top 10, you'll find it. Yeah. I really like the, uh, the old style bottles too. They're amazing. He really puts time into the, uh, into the presentation. Got to hand him, got to hand that to him for sure. Nine months ago, man, can't believe it was that long ago. Must deer is awesome. All right, let's get must deer on the old skin. So left wrist was bat. Right wrist is going to be musk deer. Let's do this. I'm excited about musk deer. This is one I've actually been wanting to try for a long time. God, the shittiest fucking sprayer. I can't help but complain about it. You must have pulled the trigger like 50 times right there. Oh, that's good. That is good. I like must deer so far. Let's see what it turns into. Interesting. Uh, Pascal Gorin is the perfumer. Let's read about it, shall we? Musk deer, brutal winter winds buffet the Siberian forest at the base of several bare trunks. Invisible love notes call to a world, to a would-be mate. The fragrant missives are secretions left by the male musk deer. Long fangs give the buck a demonic appearance, but they too play a role in the mating ritual. Weapons in a tussle with rivals for a doe's love. For centuries, musk deer have been hunted to near extinction. Coveted for their fragrant musk pod, zoologist respects this majestic creature, masterfully recreating the distinctive scent through a mixture of synthetic musks and natural oud and florals. The result evokes the animal desire of a lusty musk, musk deer amid the alluring chill of a wintry forest, all captured without a hint of menace. Hmm. 
you know, that heavy cardamom opening reminds me a little bit of Roja's Reckless or um, Clive Christian X, but the difference with musk deer is that high class ambrette. There's a beautiful ambrette seed absolute in the base and the orris absolute. This is a high quality fragrance. I like musk deer. This is one of my favorite zoologists so far. Very good. Really, really good. Surprisingly good. Now, if we were talking about, you know, I can't talk about musk law because I haven't smelled that one yet, but some of the musk heavy fragrances, like um, I've talked about how much I love uh, Siberian musk many a times. This is like my favorite, I think, musk fragrance I've ever smelled. Siberian musk uses real musk pods. Um, you can't recreate this. No matter how good of a job the perfumer does, I think it's impossible to recreate the beauty of real musk. And so while this will never do that, what it does is brilliant. This is really nice. So we have a loser with bat. I really don't like bat. And we have a winner with musk deer. That's really nice. Very pleasant. Agree with you, Flippo, for sure. Karagaz and Hachibat is based on characters of some sort of play. Karagaz is dark and Hachibat is light. In reality, Hachibat is Aventus. Yes, that's right. Karagaz means black eye. Just curious, Ramsey, do you ever watch, ever watch Sebastian? He did a video of a review of the full zoologist line a little while back. I have watched him before, sure. Yeah, I like Sebastian. I mean, even though he's definitely on that free bottle train uh, and he very rarely says much bad about brands, but I, I like Sebastian. I think he's cool. I think he's one of the better, let's say, reviewers with over 200,000 subscribers. Critia comes from Plato's latest dialogue on vanity. I'll be honest, I've just Googled it. Interesting. Good evening, Paroli. You can take that to the bank. I'm guessing it's a fruit bat then. It's a good point, Andy. Not a vampire bat. That's the new bat. Yes, it's the new bat. Not a fan. Musk deer, however, I'm smitten with. I like this. This is really good. Although, since I have a bottle of Clive Christian X, do I need a bottle of musk deer? Probably not, but it's very good. Ram will never catch up. All right, I'm catching up, damn it. Nope. Have you been ensnared by the guava ram? I feel like Ace Ventura when he's uh, outside of the cave. Shakaka. I don't like that at all. Ram needs to paw. Ram needs a pause chat button. I just need to catch up. To my untrained nose, original bat smells like figment. Man, I went with Amouage. Never smelled the new the bat new version. Well, if that's the case, I'm happy with figment. Man, Ariza Legrand Vetiver Royal Bourbon. I have a sample of that Paroli. I've never smelled it, but I have a sample. My dream is that Ramsey tries Percival and then tearfully says, "You were right, Boz. I'm so sorry." Percival is king. <laughs> you probably will have to dream that, Boz. I'll def it'll definitely bring a tear to his eye. Vintage Ungaro 3 has a red cap. No. <gasps> I don't know about that, Keith. I mean, vintage in the fact that this was uh, made by... Um, made in Italy. Ungaro Parfums S.A. Ferragamo parfums it was an older bottle it's probably not the original but i know it was an older it's it's not the newer version um Kritzia, not crazia he'll tell you in about an hour hey all right i'm catching up damn it ramsey will be flabbergasted i don't know if he can keep up with his chat all right let me keep up i'm going i'm going i still don't have a less abstraits microfiber furious well i mean Lucky for you, you won't have the trolls telling you what a show you are. You're just shilling for Eugene. You're just shilling. I know a shill when I see one. The Ongar I'm searching for is Ombre de la Nuit, but more chances of winning the lot. Never even heard of that, Andy. I have two versions right now, but I don't have a shirt. 
Bosman, there's a bigger chance of me getting ALD Russian nude sealed than your dream coming true. <laughs> there's a bottle on eBay right now, Palace. It's basically brand new. All they want is a thousand bucks. The old bat was extremely challenging. This one's not challenging. I just don't like it. How close is Bentley from Men Absolute to Gucci Pour Home? Bentley from Men Absolute is very close to Gucci Pour Home 1, Jace. Um, I've got them both. I've uh, So I've got them both. I'll do a compare. This will be a great comparison video before I run out of juice in my Gucci Pour Home 1. Um, but yes, they are very close. Uh, they are, it is true, they are very close. However, I still prefer Gucci Pour Home 1. I think that um, even though they claim this is exactly the same, uh, Hang on, let me let me wipe it this way so everyone can see them see the shilling that I'm doing. Um I I feel like the ingredients are maybe like a better quality in Gucci Pour Home One than Bentley for Men. They also claim there's like an oud note in here. Um AC from the channel smells good, says there's like a biscuit, like a warm biscuit accord in the heart of this that you don't get in Gucci Pour Home One. So I don't know. Uh, I think they're very, very close though. If you can't find this, then Bentley for Men Absolute is definitely a, a replacement. I consider this like my backup bottle of, of Gucci Pour Home. All right, now I'm behind on the chat again. I smelled like it smelled like wet earth in a cave with rotting bananas. The original. Interesting. New formulation of bats sucks. I agree. Not a fan. For a $50 difference, get the splash. Absolutely. Spot on. Get that Kiritsia splash, dude. For $59, it'll instantly, it'll instantly become the best patchouli in your collection. Okay, we need to do something about this camera. The exclusive vid looks so much. Uh, it's because I am um, live streaming from an actual camera with a microphone attached. And the uh, video that I the videos I upload, I just use my phone. I can go back to those on the live stream if you guys would prefer. Um the thing about it was the camera. So when I'm doing it on my phone, for whatever reason, sound cuts in and out occasionally. I think maybe because I don't have the best Wi-Fi up here and it cuts back in and out of the Wi-Fi in the house when it's good. And then when it goes to the 4G or whatever tower on the phone, it cuts out and I sound like I'm underwater. And so when I'm like interviewing people like, uh, you know, doing like the Russian Adam interview or the Liz Moore's interview or. I just figured it would be better for you to hear me better than to, you know, I know that the camera is not that great, but look at that, Rich. Look at that. It's good to be the rich. The spray bottle of Kritia is not particularly great. The atomizers have given me trouble. Yeah, and the cap doesn't really stay on, but I still like to be able to just pick it up and spray it. I like Roja Vetiver. Yeah, I like the Vetiver Parfum. I hate I, the Vetiver Parfum is a little bit darker and deeper and richer. The Vetiver Cologne, uh, was it Parfum Cologne? I have a sample from Lucky Scent. I think it's shite. Someone is doing moods for forty three ninety nine. That's a steal. Trust me, it's a steal. The Etherealist True Mind Sprays once every four or five or tens. Ah, you guys are, I, I, I'm lucky then because Mind Spray is like a beast. Got to step out for a bit. Good night, inter Interference. Thanks for being here, brother. Gave my bottle of Ancre Noir Sport to my friend last week. He loved it. Me, not so much. Wow. Thanks for that, Nick. Greenly PDM. Dude, we are going to have to get you off of PDM, Bosman. I thought the video maybe of me kind of bashing Leighton exclusive today would do it. I've got 95 bottles. Taroni is the only one I hate from my collection. Can't wear it. I'll buy it off you, Jace. Send me an email. I'm interested in Taroni. Bought it. Good job, Daniel. Let me know what you think. Klaus Kinski was a madman. Yes, he was. And his fragrance was just as mad, but I love it. Maybe I'm a little bit of a madman. I love Ani Tango. Wait, Tango is not a Nishan A. 
Tango's a uh, Mass Milano, isn't it? Nishane Fan Your Flames was one that I totally changed my mind on. Originally liked it. Now it's a headache-inducing mess. I like it. Uh, but then again, I haven't worn it in a while, so don't do that to me, Mike. I also like Hachivat in a hundred silent ways. I don't think I've smelled either. Nishane is a no-go for Paroli. Hachivat's the one that Boz watched the most hype videos on. Is this Kinski by Kinski that you guys talked about on live stream a couple nights ago? Is that the one in the brown and black bottle with that really prominent marijuana cannabis note? Yes, it is. Um, if you guys want, I'll go grab it. I, I just have to go downstairs. I got to go downstairs. I'm already behind on the comments. So I've shown it on the channel before. There's an unboxing of it. If you can find it, good luck. Um, but yeah, I've shown it on the channel. Um, it doesn't have a cap. There's no cap to the bottle. It comes uncapped. It comes kind of like the essential molecule bottles come. And that's also Giza showing. So if you've seen those essential molecule bottles, you've basically seen a, the Kinski by Kinski bottle. I couldn't stand the realistic smell of alcohol. Bad memory gag to dark alk, but now I can stand it. Nice for Fan Your Flames. I know what you mean. I like Fan Your Flames, actually. I like Nishane as a house. Luckily, they're... Um, I don't have the same, uh, you know, issue with Amber Woods as Rich, luckily, because that would suck. I didn't like that either. I don't like that. It's not good. B612 is an Ishani that I like along with Sultan Vetiver. I do like Ani as well, to be honest. I have a bottle of Ani, and I keep going back and forth on it. Uh, I have a, a sample of that B612 by Nishane. We'll do a, a, a blind sniffing one day. But I'm really liking this mustier. I want to see what you guys are saying about it. I think Klaus died 20 years before Kinski. Yeah, I think you're right. It was like his estate. Never liked Ani. A linear green vanilla fragrance. Yeah, that ginger vanilla is what's strange about it. Maybe it's his daughter's. Hachibak gets all the attention because he gets compared to Aventus, Aventus, which I don't see the comparison. Interesting. Klaus died in 91. Hachibat is like getting stabbed in the head by a screwdriver. <laughs> uh, just got just got the bottle of Dior Ohm Intense in the post. Congrats, Michael Pucas. Which version? Hachibat is horrible. I've never smelled it. Hopefully a good old Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> yes, Rich is here for that. The, you've got a. You've got a micro. Whenever we do our live stream, Rich, and you come on, we, we have to both come on like this. Oh, they're going to love it. They're going to be like, oh, you're shilling. You shillers. Are the Leafs ever going to play again? No. Controversial statement, but I feel like all the bros have jumped on the bandwagon, and that instantly puts me off. If they ever claim old Gerlon is theirs, I'll lose my mind. They never will. I like watching Sebastian, too. He's so laid back. Yeah, he is. Hey, Ram. In all fairness, I think Sebastian spends quite a bit of his own money. On yeah, I've seen him say he buys fragrances, too. Um, he's. I think he's both. He's on the free fragrance bandwagon, and I think he buys. I, he mentioned he bought um, Uncut Gem by uh, Frederick Mall recently. Nishane. I just, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't. The thing is, is I don't really care what other people think. That's that's a trait that served me very well. Because imagine if I was like sitting here, like, oh God, that that guy in in the in the chat the other day and in Eugene's live stream said mean things to me. I'd, I'd never be able to do this, or you'd never be able to do anything great if you always were worried what everyone else thinks. Just imagine, you know, everyone's always gonna think once you get. Large enough, you're always going to have people that try and drag you down or, as they say, haters or whatever it is. And um, so I just trust myself. And with frags, I just trust my own nose. If I smell it and like it, I say I like it. I like some of the Nishan A's. Um, even this, you know, latent exclusive at the end of the video, I said I didn't mind wearing it today. It's just $410 for what it is. Jesus. Um, it's, uh, I would, I would, let me put it this way. I would swap my bottle of Layton for this Layton exclusive. 
but I definitely would not buy it. Another discontinued Nishane I own is Boz Porus. For me, it's earlier and better version of Synthetic Jungle. I've got a sample of Synthetic Jungle. I'll talk about it soon. I got my refund for my supposedly vintage bottle of Giacomo de Giacomo. Is there anyone else here? I don't know of any reputable sellers I can purchase a real vintage. Yeah, his name is Anuj Patel. There you go. Uh, his his website is enchanteperfumes.com. There you go. Oh, no, I'm shilling for Enchante. Uh Scent of the day, Serge Luton's Musk Kublai Khan. Uh, Musk Kublai Khan. Musk Kublai Khan or Musk Deer? Hmm? Hmm? Hey? Eh? This Musk Deer is really nice, to be fair. The audio on Sebastian's video. <laughs> ah, yes, the first layering video. That's coming right up. Anyone layering is going to hell. Perfume hell, at least. Paroli is a, is a sensitive fellow, it seems. <laughs> I layer musk ravager and furio. Oh, God. Musk ravager and furio, Ram. Everyone stop chatting. I'm catching up. I'm catching up. That $1,000 Russian Oud sold within days. What? No way. I just saw it. It's 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 still there. I just saw it. You're right. It's gone. Now it's been replaced by a thousand dollar bottle of Russian musk. Whoever this person is putting these thousand dollar bottles up is a jerk off. Thousand dollar bottle of Russian musk. Unbelievable. I don't think I've smelled that one. My scent of the day was Rayan Tradition Insurrection Too Wild. I have that. It's actually not bad. It's not a bad uh, clone of um, Pure Havan. Hey, yo, a regular tangent. Welcome. I hate Leighton Exclusif, okay? It's probably one of the better Parfum de Marley's I've smelled. Best place to buy a Rige is UK eBay, and it's a much smaller market. I regularly get full bottles for two to three hundred bucks. My full Russian U was just four fifty last year. Yeah, that's that's still not bad. Uh, it's still double, I think, what it originally came out at. You really got to be daft to like the exclusive better than the original. I think it's just taste. The original is much more designer esque. I'll say it's much more. Um, I would say it's, it's much more for the compliment fiends, you know, the ones that just want, but I think latent exclusive is even like a con it's so like bubble gummy. And even though it has the dark notes, latent exclusive still has that bubble gum, amber wood thing in the background. The like button needs slapping folks. Come slap that like. Ah, welcome, Sonny. Can you really wear Antea Sport in the gym while working out? You can wear whatever you want while working out. But I love Antaeus in the heat. My friend just looks for vintage PDMs. There's someone out there who hunts vintage PDMs. There are people literally who will pay bigger money for vintage Parfum de Marly. Seriously, that, that's a thing. Uh, that's way too kind of you, Jace. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. If you want to shoot me an email, if you want to sniff anything, just let me know. I'll, I'll build you a little, little sample set. 
<laughs> right. I didn't know there was a thing, but you can't ship them off the island without a mule. Oh, we know all about that. Hard used to be more powerful. And Carlisle. You can wear it one time, then after that, you're banned from the gym. <laughs> I like Fan Your Flames. I like Fan Your Flames. Thoughts on vintage Daniel Hector character for 80? Uh, check with the news. He might have vintage Daniel Hector character, but would I pay that for what, 100 mil? Uh, also, check with Manly Sense. Keith might have some. I bought Mustier when it came out. I, I like it too. I'm impressed. Mustier is definitely the winner so far. While I'm trying to catch up on these comments, let me get Dragonfly on my skin. This is one that's, that was reformulated. There was an original version that apparently had purple juice that is very highly sought after. I'm just wondering how many PDM frags Ram Ramsey has tried. Not many, mate. Uh, just Leighton and Herod. And now Leighton exclusive. This is it. I don't like the house. I think it's shite. I'm off. Good night, Keith. Is it? Me or sealed splashes are the best preserved. I even got an 80s O Sauvage with the top notes intact. Beautiful. Good price, sir. Get it. Anu says get it. $80 for 100 mils of Daniel Hector. <laughs> uh, I have tried a few Laliques. I was like, this is okay, but nothing that moves me. I find splashes better preserved usually. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Hello, Wes. I just traded Hachibot, Black Afghano, and Taroth for some Arabian Oud frags. Well worth the trade. Never smelled that house, Sonny. Karagaz reminds me of grape soda. Ah, I bet you I'd like it. You're saying it's a good right. It's a good rice, then I can take it to the bank. Good price. Check out PDM Hamdani if you get a chance. Discontinues. It's the most non-PDM. I've heard about that. I've never smelled it, but I've heard about it. It's on the to sniff list. I knew Ram was on Anuja's paycheck. Ah, yes, that's right. That Anuj, our secret's out, dude. I'm a shill for Anuj. God damn it. Dragonfly, left elbow. Let's see how many times we got to spray this for it to actually spray. Jesus Christ, just shit. Good old dragonfly. Hmm. Hmm. Celine Barrel is the perfumer of dragonfly. All right, I'm going to let that sit for a little bit just to see if it does something else. I'm not really impressed by that opening. I know I'm a shill. What can I say? I've accepted it. I'm a shill now. Just slowly prove you can produce that latent smell for 30 bucks and still make a profit. Yes, that's right. <laughs> hey, Anuj, I'd like a bottle of Giacomo to Giacomo as well. It's, it's fantastic. PDM Wajan 2023. Um, you mean they're doing a new Wajan in, I haven't smelled that Daniel, the lost Russian treasure, any good recommendations for women parfum niche, uh, all those amouage videos I did just recently on the women's amouages are a great way to kind of dip, you know, get some ideas of, of good women's niche fragrances to buy. Uh, but I would probably go vintage if I were you. I would, I mean, I just showed the bottle earlier today, but uh, if I if I were recommending someone try some amazing women's fragrances you probably never smelled, I would go for Teatro Alla Scala. Or, you know, you could go with, um, you could go with, uh, Vintage Bandy, if you really want to make an impression, huh? You could go with um, the Vintage Dior Poison. 
a spree de parfum. This is fantastic stuff. I mean, I know it's uh, tuberose and all that stuff, but oh, it's so good. I'll just wear this to bed sometimes as like a, it's a huge perfume, gigantic. There's so many. Uh, I did actually an entire video on on women's fragrances that uh, I love to wear. You can go check that out, Madia. I got a sample of rose oil. The person I got from claims it high altitude plantation roses. Dude, rose is not feminine leaning anymore to me. I know what you mean. Uh, rose is a note, actually kind of like vetiver. Rose and vetiver are two notes that kind of took me a while to really appreciate. I'm just waiting for the nope. I bought Leighton and sold it the next day. <laughs> Anuj is the Canadian frag Svengali. True, but Azure retailed for $4.50, and I've seen them for $400. I genuinely think Russian Oud will be a 5K fragrance one day. That's crazy. Um, and I and I think that Azure is worth $400. It's, it's one of the finest fragrances money can buy, I think. There's a women's fragrance you can go for. Madia, Ma go for uh, Azure. Percival just brought me back to the old mall fragrance days when they choke you out with fierce... That sounds terrible. Seahorse is quite good. Ah, okay. We haven't gotten to that one yet. I think that'll be on the final video. Have you ever tried anything of the creations, interpretations, recreations of smaller houses like Making Sense with Dinsmore or Alexandria or Barrett? No, I have not. I'm sorry. I would love to. I just haven't. Hamdani is the one compared to Figment Man. In my opinion, it's just a skanky mess. Not even near. Interesting. No, I've never smelled that one. Wajan, you'd hate badly. Angel share, but even more sweeter. Oh my God. If called, if PDM called to send me free bottles, I'd give them the wrong address. <laughs> give them the right address. Uh, send it and then sell it on eBay. Dude, this this latent exclusive bottle, $410 for 125 mil. They're proud. What's your opinion on Amwash Opus 8? I don't think I've smelled Opus 8. Let me look it up. Uh, I have not smelled Opus 8. Yeah, this is the one I have not smelled. It's on the wish list. And it's a floral spicy fragrance. I haven't smelled Opus 8 and I haven't smelled Opus 10. Those are those are on the on the list. Uh, Dragonfly is getting better. Here, let me read you guys about the blurb. Dan is such a vintage snob. Hey, I think I caught up on the comments. I'll definitely have to look at that video. If you go to my streams, click on the live streams. There are recent Amouage, um first impressions on multiple new, well, new for me women's amouage that I tested for the very first time. It should give you some insight. I also did a live stream on the four new amouages, two of which were the new uh, women's collection. One was Lineage, uh, which is a Kareen Vinchon Spanner, and the other one is Guidance, which is a Queen Tom Beach. Guidance reminded me a little bit of uh, Chipmunk. I think, I, think, I think they actually took bits and pieces of chipmunk when they made guidance. Graham, have you noticed you barely talk about latest Arisa Dory collection? Are you disappointed in them? Uh, no, actually, I did a video on uh, the history of Atar collection. So there's a video on my channel about this. Actually, Russian Adam joined me and we talked about the history of the Atar collection together. The new one, the only one that I have is civet bomb and that's because ajay very kindly sent it to me it's a uh it's an atar and I, and I have to admit i'm not the biggest atar person is the thing so i just have to i just have to kind of make time and and wear it you know um there are now there's a bunch of other aris ladores that i want to talk about but yeah i just um i'm not disappointed at all i just um you know, I don't, I don't have the, I don't have the collection to discuss though. And and he did the new ones in such limited quantities. I don't think he even had 
enough juice if he wanted to send me little samples. I don't think he could have. They were very small batches. Comparing Hamdani to Figment Man is a mistake on Fragrantica. In my opinion, it's okay, but nothing to write home about. Ah, okay, interesting. Lots of vintage Giacomo in stock, boss. All right. Wajan is the only really good PDM, only backup bottle I own at the moment. Wow. It's the I've heard Wajan compared to Ombre Nargile. I think I would better like Ombre Nargile, but I've never smelled that either. I know you own OG Gucci for Home One, but have you ever had a chance to try the square bottle Gucci by Gucci with the violet and tobacco in it? Just curious. I've really been digging that one a lot. This one, Gucci for Home Two. Yes, this is really good. Um, one of my favorite tea-based fragrances. However, I must admit, it's been dethroned. There's a new favorite tea fragrance in the Ram household, and it is um, it is five o'clock. Ocean Jambra by Serge Luton. What a fragrance this is. Oh my God. I'm in love with this. I'm in love with Five O'Clock Ocean Jambra, man. I think it might be the best tea fragrance in my collection. Is it worth paying 270 CAD for Dior Midnight Poison? I've never smelled Midnight Poison. I've only smelled the original. Agree, they're compared just because of the synthetic skank accord, which is the same as Oud Palau as well to me. For Yuntiger reminds me of are always pretty imaginative, yeah. Thing is, I think you are against PDM because they clone other fragrances, but still it doesn't necessarily mean they aren't, can't, aren't or can't be good. Well, I think Roja clones other fragrances, and I like Roja. Um, I just think Parfum de Marley's aren't good. I, I don't think it's because they clone fragrances. I think that's part of it. Um, I just think the materials aren't good. I think it's a, I think it's a joke of a house. Even this latent exclusive. Um, it's like in the video I did, I don't know if you watched it, Boz, but in the video I did, I basically said, it's almost like someone that can speak multiple languages or when, when you switch to another language, the person that doesn't speak it immediately almost like stops in their tracks and kind of gets lost. They can't follow along. I can't follow this. When I see people hype Parfum de Marley, I think about, um, and I said this in the video too, it's like someone who grows up only driving Kias and that's it. They only drive Kias and they get the new Kia. What's it called? Like Stinger or Stingray or whatever it's called. It's like supposed to be the cool fast Kia and they go online and they're like, this is the greatest car of all time, but they're hyping a Kia. You know what I mean? Like they've never driven a Porsche or a, Lamborghini or a Maserati or a Bentley or anything like that. They're just hyping a Kia because that's what they know. That's what I think about Parfum de Marley. I think it's, uh, I think people that hype it, hype it because, um, um, I think they hype it because they get a lot of free bottles. And um, I just think, honestly, they haven't smelled enough. Like, I think the people that hype it just don't know. They're not aware of how good vintage fragrances are. You know, they don't have the Rolodex of, of smells. You know, they, they haven't gone back and smelled the stuff from 100 years ago and from 30, 40, 50 years ago. You know, they just, that's, that's all they know. They've smelled a couple designers and they're like, wow, Parfum de Marley's is great. It's not. It's not good. It's not good at all, Boz. That's my take. There's my email, mate. If you shoot me an email, I'll uh I'll respond. Thank you, Jace. That's very kind of you. Seriously. Thank you. But you said you only tried three. I only tried three. I have two. I I, I have two bottles of, of Parfums de Marley. I own two.
I've got Herod, which I actually like because I like to I like sweetness with my tobaccos. And this is a sweet tobacco. It's probably too too sweet for me at this point. I probably should be wearing something else, but I enjoy this in the cold. Um, you know, that cinnamony, comforting tobacco. Uh I like it. And then I have the regular Layton. And that's it. Uh, and now I've tried Layton Exclusive, and I got a bottle of or a decant of Go Dolphin. So I'll do a video on Go Dolphin too. But this is just a clone of Tuscan leather. And I already have a bottle of Tuscan leather, so I won't be buying a bottle of Godolphin. You know, they're just a they're just a house, you know, and and the fact that their sister house, Initio, Parfum de Marley and Initio are the same company. They just separate them. Um act like they're in competition with each other you know it's it's nothing it, there it's nothing new or original boz but honestly i'm sorry i think the hype of midnight poison was is the scarcity of bottles as opposed to the quality of the juice interesting take and news i've never smelled it loxatin also do a very good tea fragrance again vintage discontinued but agrees sarah's luton is number one interesting i'm gonna i'm gonna rank that T video one day soon then and i'm telling you this will be number one i can't think of a better tea fragrance i've ever smelled i just can't imagine boz i just can't imagine i'm gonna smell anything that's gonna change my opinion from them what what have they put out that's gonna change my opinion i mean please tell me Save 270 for other vintages. That's right. That's a loaded question, but go for the silver sprayer. What does a vintage Antaeus go for? Yeah, just go for the silver sprayer, dude. If you come from only designer to PDM and that's all you get, then it'll be the greatest fragrance. Yes, agreed. Tried like seven Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances these days. My first three half of a year was a. Go was Onyx, Oud, Tabak. All of them were good enough to pique my interest. The last seven were all designery trash. I've got a bunch of Aaron Terrence Hughes fragrances we can do these live streams on too one day. Got a whole giant tub of them. Ah, beauty, Enrique. Enrique. Royal Oud. I love that stuff. Old Loxitane was on par with Serge Luton's, but was but were overlooked. Now they have gone downhill fast. Parfums de Marley are reasonable for the single, are responsible for the single worst perfume I've ever smelled. <laughs> uh, worse than uncut gem, Rich. The problem is it's not so easy for me here where I live to get all those vintage fragrances. The samples are even harder, so I have to take your word for it. Well, stick around. I mean, take the chat's word. We're we're a community here. We're a family. Um, I, I honestly have no skin in the game to lie to you. I get nothing for it. There's zero incentive for me. Whereas a lot of those reviewers that you see them say good things about it, if they say anything bad, they get striked off the list. And it's a literal list. There is a list of people on YouTube that Parfum de Marley will take them off of the list. You know, Creed will take them off of the list. Um, Initio will take them off of the list. Francis Kirkjohn, name it, M. Waj will take them off of the list if you see anything bad. What makes our little community different here is that we have, buy our own bottles, our own samples, our, you know, it's, it's, it's my opinion. And, you know, really, I was always raised, the only thing that you have is your, Opinion. I'm from the Scarface. I'm from the Scarface school of thought. The only thing I have is my word and my balls. And I don't break them for nobody, right? That's how I feel. And if I like something, I say I like it. And if I don't, I say I hate it. That's it. Which is kind of a original thought on YouTube, apparently, nowadays. Most people I don't trust, but you have to get to know people. Like you have to get to know what the reviewers like. Like, for example, I bought a fragrance off of um off of Joy's recommendation. And he was basically saying that it is, um, 
that it's discontinued and it's one of the greatest fragrances of all time. And it was Calvin Klein Reveal, right? So I just bought it, just you know, it was discontinued and cheap. I was like, whatever, 30 bucks or something. Oh, it is probably one of my most hated fragrances in my collection. And it's because it's super sweet. Joy likes super sweet fragrances. And um, I don't like sweet fragrances. That's one thing you'll find with me. I don't like sweet fragrances. It's, it's, it's one of the things that the more I've smelled, the more sweet fragrances smell juvenile to me. They smell immature. It smells like you're smelling a college kid. It smells like you're smelling an immature person, right? And whenever you smell unsweet fragrances, if you smell like bitter, animalic, challenging, you know, uh, oily, resinous fragrances that don't have that sweetness, woody that don't have that sweetness, smells much more elegant to me. Like imagine something like Derby versus something, because technically this latent and exclusive is a woody fragrance. Imagine comparing it to the great fragrances of the past. It's no, it's no contest. Um, and so, but you have to know the taste of the reviewer. Uh, because I'm going to say something's good or bad based on my taste. So, you know, something sweet usually won't get a, won't get a love from me. I'll, I'll never hype Calvin Klein reveal like Joy did. But to him, he really loves this. And I believe he's serious. I like Joy. I like Joy, I mean. Um, but we just have completely different tastes. He likes the super sweet designery stuff. And, and I've come to kind of despise it. Carlisle's probably going to be too sweet to me. I'll try it. If, if you send me a sample or if someone sends me a sample, I will try it and do a video. My motto, and, and if you go back and watch my old videos, Boz, I've got a ton of samples. Or, or of content out there. I probably put out more content than anyone in the, in the last year. And um, my motto is I will go anywhere, talk about anything. Uh, you know, most people kind of get in their little niche. You know, they want to talk about niche fragrances. They want to talk about designer fragrances, or they want to talk about discontinued fragrances, or they want to talk about the uber hard to find expensive, you know, $3,000 rojas and and my thing is, I'll go anywhere. I'll talk about those $3,000 Rojas, but I'll also talk about the $7 Lomani Porom or the vintage fragrances or the designer, or I'm not too bougie or I'm interested in all of it. And I think that kind of throws people off sometimes because, you know, they're used to someone who loves niche hating vintage or loving vintage hating niche. And I like it all. I mean, there's stuff I like in all types of categories. I think Carlisle is a biche. Queen Tom biche, the biche mode. Never heard of that one, Rich. What do you think of XS, the OG with the Zippo cap? I don't have it yet, Boris Henderson, but, uh, or sorry, Boris Hernandez, but I will, hopefully. Anuj is hunting me a bottle, so I hope to have one one day. Rest in peace. Uh, Mr. Paco Raban, I can never remember his name. Francisco Robinetta, right? Francisco, yep, Francisco Robinetta. Rest in peace, Mr. Robinetta. You legend, sir. It's absolutely rotten, Bosman. Foul as fuck. No more v Valentine's gifts for Ramsey from Creed. That's right. BDK is the third sister, allegedly. <gasps> it's a trio of sisters. Must have been discontinued then. The one that has the same bottle as Gucci made to measure. And rightly so, Bosman. Carlisle is a better version of Mancera Red Tobacco, and that does not say much. <laughs> they have the same misses, for sure. Ispahan smelled like an exclusion, like an exclusion zone. And all this garbage of changing names and making shit uber complicated for the consumers. What I always rage about the industry. It's an absolute joke. Yeah. I mean, you're exactly right. Um, the different names, the different concentrations, you know, I mean, look at just look at this Roja. This is the 
pure parfum concentration of his vetiver. This is 500 bucks. The parfum cologne is almost half the price for double the juice. Um, in the old days, they never would have released a parfum at double the price for half the juice. Uh, they just never would have done it. They uh, they didn't need a parfum at double the price, extra EDP intense, because the regular EDP, the regular eau de toilettes back in the day, for the most part, lasted all day. I mean, you know, but what I could just grab anything. I mean, just we talked about this one recently. Spray Portitos on, you'll smell it 12 hours later. Spray on uh Spray on Balenciaga Pour Homme, you'll spray it, you'll smell it 12 hours later. By the way, someone said Balenciaga's trying to bring this back. Is that true, Rich? Are you still here for this? Um, how insane would that be if that was true? The news, you said you have plenty of Giacomo de Giacomo vintage in stock, and I just happened to get cheated the other night, and a dude sent me the modern, so I need one. A news ships all over the world. As long as you're not on the moon, he'll ship to you, bro. Okay, now I know where you stand. I can tell you I like the sweet, but I don't feel immature. The more you sniff, though, the more you will... Again, I'm not bashing you. I'm just saying that the more you sniff, the more you will come to associate sweet fragrances with juvenile. That's the one, the, the chrome door knocker cap on it. It's pretty nice for a designer. I use it for my rainy day type vibes, moods. Grand Soir is pure syrup. I really don't like Grand Soir. Carlisle isn't sweet. Trust me, it's woody smoky. I have a feeling it's going to be sweet, Paz. It's a Parfum de Marley, dude. They put that Parfum de Marley vanilla in everything. All right, let's get back on track. Dragonfly. Kind of green and floral, but it's not exciting. Giant Lotus Pads. This is built by uh, Celine Barrel. Giant Lotus Pads part to make way for buds that pierce the surface of the jade green pond. They raise their faces to the sun. Their delicate fragrance floating around them. In the shadows of the flowers, tiny dragonfly nymphs also emerge from the shallows. They spread their fragile wings and shyly take flight ready to explore a world beyond the water. Shimmering pools of nearby golden rice fields call to the dragonflies. Their long quivering bodies flit across the cascading terraces to alight upon swaying stalks, sparkling with sunlight caught in droplets on in iridescent wings. Wow. Top notes, grapefruit, basil, angelica seed, ginger, and rice. Aquatic florals, geranium, jasmine, sambac, mimosa, orris, absolute, rose, violet, leaves, rainwater, moss, patchouli, tonka, vetiver, benzoin, and cashmeran. Hmm. I don't know about this one. I don't, I don't really, this doesn't move me at all. It's just kind of a green floral. It's kind of boring. Contact me and I'll send you various details. Yep. Anuj is the man. I see you're going to die on this PDM hill. <laughs> of course it's sweet, Boz. It's a PDM. They put that sweet vanilla in everything, bro. Do you agree with Antoine that some wear perfumes just because it's a Versace? Yes, absolutely. 100%. 100%. A new ships worldwide, my friend. <laughs> can you make a song about pdm and release it on itunes the only thing i like i pdm is the fact i was bought carlisle years ago in the first batch herod's only bottle i never opened it and sold it for the price of a few areges mental that is insane dude that's insane andy many many times sir I feel like following the nose is the best way. Price shouldn't dictate your taste, but far more people go that. Yes, absolutely. See ya, Boz.
Glad to have you here, brother. Totally agree. As the first 50 mil I owned by had Gucci by Gucci written in the front. Then last month I re-upped and this bottle has Gucci pour home written on the front. Like, what the fuck? Huh, interesting. Especially when the juice is a different color completely than the previous version. Yeah, that is kind of scary. I like everything as well. Niche, vintage, modern, sweet, not sweet, eastern, western. Yeah, I'm with you. Didn't go, just joking. <laughs> Fear not, vintage excess ohm is on the way with your Serge Luton's. Ah, that's exciting stuff. I will, but just to clarify, I've seen you all around the community, so I'm already by far convinced that you're trustworthy and that it'll be a legit, oh, yeah, you don't, uh, you don't have to worry about a news, dude. He'll, he'll make sure you have pictures of everything. You know, the exact price you, uh, Anuj is probably one of the most trustworthy people you'll meet in this industry. There's an article on Balenciaga Porum on Fragrantica. <gasps> is that true? Never gone Fragrantica. Balenciaga Porum, the power of dreams. Wow, it's a cool advertisement on Balenciaga Porom. I've never seen that advertisement. It shows this top right here that I always thought was like marble. It shows it like blending into a stream of water on the advertisement. I've never seen that before. There is nothing of water in this. Crazy. How is Roja Vetiver Parfum Performance? I'm wondering on getting a sample I had seemed weak. Well, it... It's not very good, to be honest with you. Six hours, what I probably would have said. Six to seven. Um, don't get it unless you get a big discount. I don't think it's worth it. Just go buy, um, just go buy Guerlain's Vetiver or buy Ancre Noir or something like that. I think it's a better Vetiver. Carlisle is a great, sweet, sexy patchouli frag for winter for what it is. A great frag within its category. Never smelled it, Sonny. I'd, I'd love to, though. Sweet is juvenile. It's just what I get. I just get juvenile. Yeah, just reach out. My, here, the, um, even, even better, Jimmy. Uh, just... Go to EnchantePerfumes.com at the, the banner at the bottom of the screen right here. And at the top of the very home page, you'll see his WhatsApp number. Just shoot him a text on WhatsApp and he'll respond with um, he'll respond with pictures and all that good stuff. Plenty of better patchouli frags. Interesting. That's right, the vintage formula. Ah, that's fair. Yeah, 200 is fair, I would say, for 50 mils. You don't own the brand. Don't be offended by other people bashing a consumer product you purchased. I bought and sold many fragrances in our taste. That's it. Taste constantly change. You're, you're spot on, Andy. But some people have to get to that moment. You know what I mean? That is that is part of the problem, I think, with... Um, I think it's part of the problem within the community in general is that people see themselves within the fragrance, right? So like they aspire to own like a Roja, you know what I mean? And then when they own it, if someone comes along and says anything bad about it, they take it personal, like you're bashing them. You're not bashing them. You're bashing, like you say, a consumer product, but they like identify with it because it's turned into like a Veblen good. You know what I mean? It's not just a product anymore. It's something that it, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, if you saved up all your money and bought like, you know, a Bentley or something, come, someone comes along and bashes the Bentley says it's shit and, and you feel hurt. You know what I mean? It's just kind of one of those things, but that, that is indicative of the, of the, uh, of the industry. Which bottle did you, uh, did you get Jimmy? Did you, did you get all three? 
Ladulaix Geese, Velam, or uh, Desandros. Thanks for being here, Arbaz. Lovely seeing you, my friend. Article about Balenciaga porn on for granted had a bunch of peeps thinking, assuming there is a relaunch coming. I think this is simply a case of peeps not reading it. Yeah, I was reading it thinking, where's this relaunch thing happening? Beautiful pictures, though. I want to save these advertisements. They're they're lovely. Yeah, I definitely want to save these advertisements. These are really cool. I love Balenciaga Pour Homme. What a fragrance. But tastes generally only go one way upwards. That's right. Thoughts on Danger Pour Homme by Roja. Is it similar to Heritage? It is damn similar to Heritage. I, um... I've got the uh, Parfum version. I think the Parfum Cologne is kind of shite, but I do have the Parfum and it's very good and I do really enjoy wearing it. Uh, basically what he did is he rogeted it up. Um, he rogeted it up. Hey, there's a package coming. Can't be a Nuja's package already, can it? FedEx man's here. It can't be, cannot be. Um, it's got cumin. So Danger Pour Home has cumin. Um, I'm trying to see how big this package is. Oh shit. I'm gonna go check this one. Don't go anywhere. We might have a random unboxing. Okay, no luck. It was a dud. It was from Sam's. My wife ordered some stuff. Anuja's package will probably be here in a couple days. Um, so yes, Danger Pour Home, getting back to Enrique's question, is basically Roja's take on Heritage. It's a little bit of amped up cumin, a little bit of um, ambergris, and uh, some animalics, just a little bit. So it's it's really good. I enjoy wearing it, but you you will notice the similarity to Heritage instantly. I mean, it's uh, it's it's one of the biggest issues with the house with the house. You know, I took a picture of the uh, of yes, I did. I took a picture of the uh, Fragrantica advertisement, the Balenciaga advertisement. It was simply a theoretical idea discussion, but a brilliant article nonetheless. Surprise unboxing? No, it was close, but no, we're going to have to wait. Nah, it's not a Nuja's. We still have a couple more days, maybe a week for that. Is there a big difference in the Dragonfly reformulations? I've seen crazy prices for the Purple Juice. I've seen crazy prices for the Purple Juice, too. Um, I couldn't imagine paying, hun you know, extra hundreds for... A fragrance like this this is not moving at all let me get the final one on the final one is cockatiel let's get this spray going god shitty what a shitty sprayer it's terrible 
Good old cockatiel. <laughs> That's right. My Parfum de Marley order arrived. Ooh, that is powdery. Oh, chalky. Chalky and powdery. Is it supposed to be chalky and powdery? Small inside scoop. Someone gifted Ramsey a bunch of vintage serge. Not me, and I'm simply the middleman mule. Yes, you'll be very impressed. I'm going to have him on stream, hopefully, that day when I do the unboxing. So that should be fun. Potty, I think I missed it, but how do I get in touch with Anuj? The banner at the bottom of the screens that's constantly saying Enchante Perfumes. That'll get you to Anuj, mate. He'll ship anywhere. This is... um. Print screen function on your computer will produce a way better quality. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, pr I'm not printing it. Come on, man. Yes, that's right. I'm a, I'm a boomer in my uh, technological ways. I'm just going to set it. I'm just going to like send it to Rich Mitch later over WhatsApp. Plus, even if I did hit print screen, I would have no clue how to get it back to my phone anyway, Palace. So. <laughs> come on ah look at that Paroli now got it on his thumbnail the power of dreams I love it Sonny's like how do I reach this Anuj guy what where where how where's his thing I don't see it he'll, he'll get you taken care of mate Anuj is the man I think we're heading to the point where every scent profile has been done before with only slight differences between them. I know what you mean. It feels that way. Um, it feels that way. Let's read off the uh, blurb for Cockatiel. Cockatiel is done by Sven Pritzkolet. Australian spring arrives bearing dazzling frocks of yellow blossoms to dress the bare golden wattle trees. Clouds of sweet honeyed fragrance caught up, caught upon the breeze carry an invitation inland where a flock of cockatiels ha happily take up the celebration. Emerging from dusty nests, the birds are ready to preen and prance on a wobbly stage of branches. Vivid crests bop to the rhythm of their joyous songs. After a final encore, the flock takes flight. All, all lighting in a nearby field, they share a delightful brunch, buzzing with the thrill of their stunning recital. I don't really like this either. It's, um, I said it smelled chalky and um powdery in the opening it says champagne i don't really get champagne though champagne raspberry and rhubarb maybe rhubarb but like a chalky harsh rhubarb um acacia powdery notes absolutely cashmeran gayak patchouli vanilla and musk how much is the original bottle of dragonfly Hundreds more than what you sell the regular Dragonfly for, Victor. Still on. I think Cockatiel is a reissue from Sven's now defunct brand. A collab he made with Yana. It won an Art and Olfaction Award. Really? I don't like that. Sorry, Victor. I don't like... Today's not been a good day. Musk deer is by far the winner. I really like musk deer. That is a fantastic musk fragrance. But all caught up, all caught up, that's right. All caught up. I think they're going for four or 500 bucks, Victor. I don't think they're cheap at all. I think they're very expensive. 
What was the difference in the ingredients? All right, I'm going to drop the link since we're all caught up on our zoologist sniffings and see if anyone wants to come on and show their show their collection or just talk. I haven't had someone on for a while, so it'll be a good change of pace. So we've done... We've done bat, which I did not like. No, it's not your fault, the tester sprayers. They are absolutely awful. I hate these things. They are terrible. Um, you know, it's crazy. Roja uses these. Uh, Zerzhov uses these. So you're not alone, Victor. It's just these are just uh, not a fan. However, uh, there there is hope. There's some brands that... Uh, I've put out some pretty good sprayers recently that I found. Probably the one that's most impressed me is this Strange Love sample set. Uh, the sprayers on this Strange Love sample set are absolutely amazing. It is, um, you can tell it's like a different kind of sample. I'm a big fan of these. These are much better. So no, you're not alone, Victor. And I know it's not your fault. It's just that's how those samples are. I get it. I think the only actual driver for innovation is synthetics nowadays. In the big houses, yeah. But people like, uh, you know, Russian Adam and Bortnikov and Ensar Oud are still doing great things. I'm really uh, digging some of these Oud scents that I found. And I'm getting to know and exploring. And uh, Oud's a really interesting place for me because um, the scent profile the, of real Oud is, is so vast. You know, there's so much to to get to. You can do so much with with Oud. It could it could be. Um, there's an Oud scent profile that I discovered recently that I I really um, I really did not like. And it's supposed to be like a softer, you know, gentler, easier to wear oud. It's called, um, and you oud heads will know this. I apologize. I'm not as big of an oud head. I'm trying to see if I can, where did I put the, I saved it under one of the brands. Uh, let's see, home videos. So... It was Kinam. It's called Kinam. And Kinam is apparently a really expensive type of oud, but it has this like buttery feel to it. Um, and it's it's not animalic like you would expect, you know, Indian oud to be. It's not fecal. doesn't have that barnyard vibe. doesn't have that paint thinner feeling of some ouds. And it's super expensive. I mean unbelievably expensive in fact it's so expensive that almost all the kinam fragrances have no real kinam in them it's like the imagination of the perfumers even the people like ensar a lot of times they use different types of oud to give off this kinam scent profile and so and i didn't like it like i'm not a kinam fan um and so figuring out the different types of oud i do like like i know i've shown this one off recently but it's a new addition this chinese oud Man, there's just so there's so much to discover. Um, so yes, tried Zara Vibrant Leather yesterday. I was amazed how close it was to Averts for a cheap clone Aventus. There you go. Ram's brutal about sample sprayers. I hate them. The only champagne s fragrance I like is Creed's Vetiver Geranium. I I used to have a bottle of that. I think I can't remember what it smelled like though. Kid stuff, I feel you. Thanks for being here, Allie. Oh, absolutely, Anuj, 100%. And the people giving us shit for being shills, I think, number one, they haven't smelled them. Or number two, I think they have a bone to pick with Eugene for some reason. Uh, or 
you know, me. Maybe they have a bone to pick with me for some reason. They're just taking it out on Eugene. I have no idea why. But I 100% agree with you, Anuj. Some of the best stuff I've smelled. Um, some of the best new stuff I've smelled. To me, uh, Eugene's brand is competing with stuff like... Um, it's competing with stuff like Roja. It's competing with stuff like, you know, MFK. It's competing with brands that sell. It's com it's competing with Frederick Mall. You know, that's that's its competition, to me. Um, and to be able to compete with those brands and do it at two hundred and sixty bucks a bottle for hundred mil, you know, not five hundred bucks for fifty mil. The value for money for me is still huge. But, you know, it's going to take some time for people to come around to the fact that a YouTube fragrance is that good. You know, I think all the stars aligned. And whenever you not only take into account the idea of the fragrance, but then Antoine Lee, and then whenever you add Remy uh, and his amazing materials behind behind the brand, it's a it's a you know, I think it's, it's I think it's going to shock some people. I mean, if I was Dior. I, and I and I was high up in Dior. I would take a bottle of Les Abstraits into the boardroom and be like, "This should be a bitch slap to each and every one of you. Stop putting out Rouge Trafalgar and whatever the fuck else you're putting out because stuff like Le Du Excuse is eating their lunch, annihilating what they've been putting out in their range that sells for double what you know LDE sells sells for. So yeah, it's crazy." Yeah, it's it's I love how different the oud profiles can be, and I'm really coming to enjoy it. I think I think for me, uh, there's only a couple places left for me to go. Vintage, there's still a lot of vintage I haven't explored yet. It's like there's a wall of vintage fragrances. No matter how much you know, you always learn more. Like today, I just learned that Antea Sport ran for almost a decade. It wasn't just a year or two. Uh, it, it ran all the way until 1995, Antea Sport did. I did not know that. That's news to me. Uh, and, you know, there's so many vintage fragrances out there to discover. Uh, and I feel, I feel much more at home. Um, I feel much more at home discovering some of the vintage fragrances because every time I discover a vintage fragrance I always get this you know shock at how good it is how multifaceted it is I bought Revlon French line on a whim for 30 bucks got it in amazing outstanding fragrance uh and that has happened over and over and over again and so often with niche and new designers I'm just constantly disappointed you know it's like there's a thousand cents put out a year and you have to sort through 998 of them to find the two good ones, you know? So 998 times you're going shite, 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 not for me, not for me, shite, shite, you know? And it, that, that can get old. That's what uh, I think, I think that portion of it is what, um, it's, it's what burns people out, honestly. When is Tiger coming out? I'd love to smell it. My fave atomizer and every one of you of you OG here, please take it easy on me as I'm relatively new, collected four to five years, but has to be Sean John 3 a.m. I've never smelled that, Jimmy. The new Dragonfire is one of my favorite scents. It's ever-changing, but people dismiss it as a commercial green scent. It does smell kind of commercial and green, Victor. But, may yeah, maybe you're right. I'll have to spend more time with it. I don't like uh, my my the 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 two fragrances from this I dislike the most are Bat and uh, uh, Dragonfly. I'm sorry, and um, Cockatiel. Bat and Cockatiel are the two that I don't like the most from this round. Dragonfly is okay, but it does just seem like a commercial green floral. Not it's not for me. I'll tell you that it might be a well made fragrance, but it's not my type of fragrance. Must Deer is the winner. For me, I really like this creation. This is a good synthetic musk. This is very well done. Pascal Gorin. Mm. 
that um, that top Calamus cardamom thing reminds me a little bit of Roja's Reckless, and which I think reminds me a little bit of Clive Christian X, which came out in like 2001. It was a um, Giza showing from way back when, uh, one of the earliest launches of um, one of the earliest launches of the or when the brand got launched, basically. But what's brilliant about musk deer to me is that bass combination of ambrette and orris. Those two notes in the bass just make it something special. And then you add just a little touch of oud. There's just a little touch of funk in here, I think, to try to recreate what um, the musk accord does in real musk, like uh, musk you know, like the one I talked about earlier, that Musk Lava by Aris Ladore, a Musk Lav by Aris Ladore that uses real musk, you know? That oud in there is trying to recreate that in musk deer. And it's doing a bang up job. That's an amazing creation you have there, Victor. I'm glad to discover that. Rookie, hands down, rookie of the year, hands down. And, you know, I guess when you're the new kid on the block, they're going to give you a hard time, but Ah, when Essex happens in April. Nice. Congrats, Victor. I'm really happy for you. Uh, from Eugene's reaction, it sounds like you've got a winner on your hands. What made me buy that one instantly was his more recent video of him saying why it's the best scent ever. And the whole time he didn't say one single word. <laughs> yeah, he did that when Persele is asking him a question too recently about... Uh, about he asked him a question about maybe what's wrong, you know, uh, the fragrance industry. And he just didn't give an answer. He said, no answer is an answer. Who's giving you grief. I'll take care. I don't know who it is, Galen. Actually, they called you out too. Uh, they left a comment. I think I deleted the comment cause I didn't want to have that shit on the channel just cause they were being jerk offs. But, um, they said, actually, the 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 one of them may still be up. I didn't I didn't ban the I didn't ban the original guy who said it because he wasn't being a complete, you know, jerk. It was the other guy who was uh, giving me a hard time in uh, in Eugene's live stream today, uh, and you know they were like, we're simping for them, we're 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 simping. We're simping for less. I've never even heard that word simping and, until the, you know, fragrance community started using it. And, um, you know, they were like, they, you're, you're wearing a brand, you're wearing a branded towel on your, on your shoulder, Ramsey. Don't you know, it's a branded towel. How can I trust anything you say? It's just, just asinine shit, just drama. They just love, um, People like that, those are the type of people that I'll block and they'll make another account just to come back. And, and you know, that's the type of people, like who would do that? I would never create another account just to come back and talk to someone if they block me. I'd be like, fuck you, bye. Those are the type of people they'll come back just to try to drag people down, you know? Buy Aventus and buy Zara Vibrant Leather. You will see how close they are. I love my Aventus. Is Cor is the Coros on Anuja's website vintage? <laughs> Anuj, you got a new one? Nope. Yeah, you got to hunt for that vintage one, Sonny. It's not just going to drop in your lap. Just try to find one that has the silver shoulders and you'll be fine. I'm back just to straighten this out. <laughs> We're just messing with you, boss man. Oh, I'm sorry you got your feelings hurt, bro. We didn't mean to make you run. Like we said the other day, just some initial hazing, you know? Just hit up a news. He'll, he'll try to set you straight. Roshas Man coming in 2023. Roshas Man Intense. You know, there's already a Roshas Man, and it lasts a long time. You don't really need a Roshas Man Intense. You really don't. I mean, this is a $25 fragrance. 
It lasts six, seven, eight hours. Just respray it. What do you need the intense for? That's the shit Anuj was talking about earlier. How they, um, you know, how they kind of play with things and re-release stuff. Intense. Eau de Parfum Intense. X-Ray for double, triple the price. Pure Parfum. You know, discontinue. Like uh, what Amwaj is doing right now, which pisses me off is they're making the, the regular version of Jubilation, which was perfectly fine the way it was, so weak that people are clamoring for the Jubilation uh, exceptional cologne. It's going to be the exceptional, exceptional X-ray, excuse me, the exceptional X-ray. Uh, it's going to be Jubilation 69 and triple the price, of course, when the original Jubilation lasted fucking two days on your skin. You know, it's just, that's the shit that is the, is the ugly side of the fragrance world right now. Anoush keeps the good stuff in the back. That's right. Commercial green doesn't sound bad. It's not. Uh, Dragonfly is not bad. It's just, um, it's, it's not my type of fragrance. Let's put it that way. It's not something I would go for. Musk Deer, on the other hand, is. I like it. Hey, Ram, I want to try all Eugene's perfumes, all three, but they don't have a discovery set. Will they bring it? Uh, he has samples now on the website, I think, of two. And Desandra samples should be coming soon, he said. So, hope they redesigned the bottle as well. Oh, you don't like the bottle, eh? What don't you like about this bottle? It's awesome. Look at this. It's a lava lamp. It's a rocket. It's all kind of cool things. Please give me your email. Just go to enchanteperfumes.com and, and you'll see it. So sad, Ram. I missed that $79 Aramis Tobacco Reserve the other night. I was telling, I told you to just buy it. Didn't I? As soon as you said that, I said, buy it. It's going for $200 on eBay. Samples are available to order. There you go. I think Dior were thinking of future profits when they hired Francis K because he is a master of synthetics and those chemical compounds cost 1%. That's, that's it right there. Yeah. But you can smell it. When you smell some of Francis K's perfumes, they smell like some of the most plasticky synthetic stuff you'll ever smell is the azara Poron vintage even second version with the sticker shoot him an email bro go to enchanteperfumes.com and shoot him an email he'll send you direct pictures victor wong would love to know your reasoning behind recreating certain perfumes rather than discontinuing i think i know your taste in general personally i don't care much about natural fragrances with real oud and musks This is a good musk deer, though. Um, I mean, it's a good musk fragrance. It, um, you know, like I said earlier in the video, you're not going to recreate, um, you're not going to be able to recreate what real musk does in a perfume. You're just not. It's, uh, I don't think it's possible. I don't think even with the best perfumer in the world, could you recreate what, you know, real musk does in a perfume? I think it's impossible. It just, it adds something that is, you know, almost hard to describe in words. It just, it's, it's, uh, it's almost like something you would associate with the almighty. You know, it's that, it's that real musk is, is, and honestly, some of the synthetic musk doesn't move me the way that the real musk does. But there are synthetic musk fragrances that I really like. I mentioned earlier um, Musk Kublai Khan. And I like Musk Ravageur. That's a good one from Frederick Mall. Uh, I really like probably the new musk fragrance that's taken me is uh, there is a there's a fragrance from uh, Les Indemodables called Musk's de Sab Musk de Sables. And this is a fantastic musk. Really, really well done. Um, 
you know, it's and and musk deer is is up there with them for the for the people that don't want to um you know, for the people that want to make sure that there's no real animal products in their fragrance and all that good stuff. Musk deer is a good one. I like it. 3 a.m. isn't that bad of a fragrance, although it doesn't perform the best, but it has gin and tonic type of vibe, but that fat pressurized atomizer they use on those bottles. Eh, what other people think of me is none of my business. That's it. I'm with you. Russian Adam in comparison would bankrupt Dior in a year. <laughs> uh, he's in a perfect spot for what he is and who, what he does, who he is, what he wants to do. Living in Thailand with the prices, he can he can afford to continue to do things the way he's doing it, make a great, a good profit for himself, and keep prices low. Like when when we were talking and I was telling him how expensive some of the things in are in the United States, he was shocked. Um, but I think being in Thailand allows him to continue uh, his brand with the prices that he's at. He's at. He's in a good place. Will the intense be even sweeter? Probably, right? You would think it's going to be super sweet. I mean, this is really sweet on its own, but some people compare this to um, Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem, which I've never smelled, but I would love a vintage bottle. Extra shot of cappuccino will be in it. Ah, yes. Allie got the vintage silver shoulders, uh, Sonny. Rambler, screw the Super Bowl. That's right. Just give me a mic. The flankers is worth, is worth its weight in gold. Yep. Intense doesn't need to mean longer lasting. Jerome Intense is different from the original. Not a longer. You're right. It's true. But it does give off. Uh, to John Doe de general public, intense gives off the fact that it's going to be longer lasting or more intense or whatever. But I, I you're right, Mike, spot on. I own MJ Legend. How would you compare? I never smelled it. Actually, I have smelled it, but I was a little kid when I had a bottle. I can't remember it. Yeah, I want to try New Harlem too. How close is Rosas Man to New Harlem? Uh, I don't know because I've never smelled New Harlem, but I hear they're very close. Same perfumer. Yeah, same perfumer. Um, that is a fair price. It is expensive, but that is the market value. So if you want it, buy it. It is a fair price. Yeah, that's true. Just get in touch with Eugene and he'll take care of you. There you go. Yeah, if it's not listed, he can set, he can sort you out with some with some samples. I've never smelled uh, Givenchy pie, believe it or not. That's it. A Eugene chamois over the shoulder. Oh, my God. Shilling. Oh. You can make a stand out of the base on Rochester's Man. If you nudge it just the right way, you can make a stand out of the base. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yes, you're right. Looks dangerous to me. Not even close, brother. The only exception to X rates being worth it is, oh, there you go. Andy, you're spot on, man. We see eye to eye on a lot of things. Over the Musk is pretty good. That's the one Sebastian likes, right? Is that from that, uh, what brand is that? Dolce & Gabbana's, uh, you know, high-end line or whatever it is. I haven't smelled it. Anyone know if there's real civet in Bortnikov's? That I don't know. Um, yeah, that I don't know. I want to get my hands on that bottle of Vintage Lidge. Been waiting to try that one for years. Honestly, mate, uh, just go buy the new, just go buy the one that's in the, um, just go buy the one that's in the Listerine bottle. You know, this is good. And, and I've got the, this is the O extreme and I've got the one with the black around the outside that everyone hypes too. They both smell the same to me, basically.
Yes, the Thierry Mugler one. It's been reformulated though. Ah, Thierry Mugler, that's right. I have it's been reformulated. That sucks. I never got a chance to smell the original. I have smelled some real deer musk, some very animalic, some almost floral. The perfumer of musk deer has done a great job recreating the lighter floral style of real deer musk. Yes, he has. I agree with you, Victor. It's very, very good. Pascal Garan is a nickname, King of Musks with IFF. I did not know that, Victor. Very interesting. Uh, were you able to get that order canceled, Ace of Souls? Good to hear it, man. Rochas is stronger on the coffee compared to the Creed. You mean bond number nine? A bit of advice for vintage hunters. When you see something you want on whatever platform as a fair enough price, buy it. Instead of being too smart and then whining after the price. <laughs> Got a sample of Givenchy pie recently and I do like it nice. It's difficult to explain the exactly smell of deer musk. Yeah, once that's that's very true. It is very, it is very, it's a it's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever uh had to try to think about explaining. Um Siberian musk is the one I would recommend if you had to try one. Uh, how would you describe this? It's almost like, it's almost like puffy, uh, fuzzy, buttery, fluffy. Um, and yet there's this animalic side to it, almost like you're smelling the actual hair on the deer itself you know what i mean like you're smelling the animal the deer but you're also getting the flowers the deer is standing in the bark that the deer rubbed on the you know the green meal that the deer ate previously it's like you're getting everything around the animal as well and everything just like levitates. There's this, um, oh no, my shill towel. Don't want to forget that. A fair price is an oxymoron. <laughs> Rob Lawrence of Valerie. Oh God. Dude, those are two of my favorites of all time. I can't pick. Go back to my top 100 and just see which one I put in higher. I can't pick right now. Scott of Port Parfum is also in a silver shoulder bottle in the full size non mini. Interesting. Did not know that. Yep. That's it. I heard the new Rochas Intent is actually the same fragrance. It's just this new bottle is ribbed. Ribbed for your pleasure. Safari Cosmere. Eldo Tom of Finland. That's a good one. I've been enjoying Nasomato Silver Musk and also Extreme Musk by Paris Monte Carlo. Never smelled either. There's just too many fragrances out there. Bond number nine. Yeah. So there's more coffee in the Rochas, huh? I agree 100% from eBay to Mercari to Etsy. There are plenty of avenues to find great deals on vintage items and plenty of reliable sellers on these platforms. Yeah. But there's only one Anuj. One of my buddies was a huge fan of perfumes to Marley. He ended up getting diabetes from how sweet they were. <laughs> YSL Jet. Man, that could go either way. It could also go either way on which day of the week it is. Uh-oh, we've got a we've got a we've got a raise your hand for a question, please. Andy, would you care to respond before I cut this off? I need to go run. It's not raining outside anymore. I gotta try to get, lose this gut.
Nuj is all into the different types of bottles and stuff. So um, I actually didn't know there was a silver shoulder version of a Scotta pour ohm either. I heard there was a, sil a Scotta pour ohm silver flanker. There's a flanker to this. I don't know if you guys knew that. It's called, uh, I think it's called a Scotta pour ohm silver, but I've never smelled it. <laughs> a gift it was YSLY or Dolce and Gabbana K God probably YSLY Dolce and Gabbana K might be one of the worst things I've ever smelled Which perfumes do you wear to run uh, whatever I'm wearing? Now it'll be Mustier, Bat, uh, Night, or Dragonfly, and uh, Cockatiel. Cockatiel is really chalky and powdery. Good night, Rick. Thanks for being here, brother. I keep losing my uh, shelf rag. Scotta Porum Parfum. It's chrome on the shoulders. A Scotta Porum Parfum. Scotta Porum. I don't see a parfum version of a Scotta Pour Homme, Andy. There is no silver shoulder for a Scotta Pour Homme, but they did have a limited flanker called Silver Light. That's what I was thinking. K is made for the wearer. K is not made for the wearer. It's for everyone else. It really does smell disgusting up close, but fine from a 10-foot distance. Perfect for 10-year-old boys. That is a great analogy right there. Galen, it is perfect for 10-year-old boys. Yep. They also did an all-chrome bottle limited edition for Christmas only. That's insane, dude. No. Another 13 reminded you of K? Oh, my God. I've never smelled another 13, but uh, that really... Really makes me not want to smell it. Well, must is the winner today. We've got a Andy Pike versus Anuj Patel war going on right here. I can't end this right now. How good is a Scott of magnetism? Magnetism um, is great. Magnetism. <laughs> Fragalanche. Let's see what we lost. We got a bottle down, folks. We got a bottle down. Casual Friday lives. Let me check the ones that fell. They all survived. At least I think they did. They did. They all survived. Even Parfum de Marley Godolphin survived. Crazy. I just got too much shit up here. So let's put it all back.
All right. That was fun. Uh, I was going to say that... Uh, <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. I was gonna say, Escada magnetism is amazing. Uh, poor Ohm. This is good stuff. Really good. Uh, and the Escada that I don't like is Sentiment. Poor Ohm. This one sucks. Even for the thirty bucks I paid for it, I don't like it. Um, I do not like it. But. Uh, Escada magnetism is fantastic. It's just super expensive. I tried to get a backup because I only have, I don't know, 30 mils of juice maybe. And they were like three. There's there's someone selling a bottle of magnetism on eBay for like $700. Nuts. Something broke? Nope. I think everything lived. Surprisingly. Yep. Yep. Everything lived. All the only thing that fell was samples. They survived the cliff jump. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, guys. All right. Well, I guess this uh, one of the final zoologist blind sniffing streams is over. So, thanks for being here. Thanks for the support. Uh, Love our little fragrance family. Don't forget to leave a like on the live stream. The algos love that shit. And um, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow. I might have to start going into the office though. So we might have to space these out a little bit, but it's good stuff, everyone. I've enjoyed doing these. I love hanging out with you guys. Love chatting about fragrances. And uh, yeah, it's about my cutoff. Usually by now my voice starts to go. So it's good stuff. Thanks again, Victor Wong, for sharing the sample set. Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Cheers. Bye, guys.